Charlie is a little bit better at playing to the board and has large creatures of his own. Xenagos is not nearly going to be the same threat that it was against Gerard. And we saw Xenagos basically bury Gerard in the first game of the semifinals. That's less likely to be the case here, but Domri is much more potent weapon. Yeah. One thing I want to ask about is how good do you feel Packrat is on Reinhardt's side, especially as when he's on the draw, as we know he'll be in game one. It is pretty poor uh, in, in general against John Monsters. Uh, just too easy for them to go over the top of it, just go bigger. We saw Chris Bakula yesterday early in the Swiss rounds have a turn two pack rat on the play against Joe Monsters and just get outclassed on the ground by Polugranos and friends. So uh, there's random games that pack rat can steal. And in some protracted games, a turn five pack rat with the ability to make a rat on the spot, that can lead to something good. But a turn two pack rat is not very good against John Monsters overall. All right, so both players have presented here. Remember, Chris Van Meter, by virtue of being the, the higher seed, will be on the play. Van Meter still has yet to drop a match this weekend, winning the first eight rounds, drawing into the finals, and then winning two more to make, drawing into the top eight, then winning two more to make it into the finals. Yeah, if this is, if this is finally Chris's opportunity to, to break this, we say losing streak, losing streak in quotes. He's won a ton of matches in the open. Right, despite, despite being on a losing streak, you know, he's in, he's second in the standings. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what a run this has been. Again, 8-0, a double draw, and then very impressive run through the elimination rounds. Not really getting tested. The quarterfinals, um, there was a game loss for drawing extra cards, but uh, the game that he did win, was he was in a commanding lead, and it looked like the second game he was also going to have a commanding lead. His matchup against Gerard, which looked on paper to be really tough, Chris saw it through pretty easily. And now he finds himself in the finals. He hasn't really had a close game yet in the top eight. He has won two fairly convincing 2-0 victories. Yeah. Game two against Gerard was the closest thing to looking like a game. And even that was pretty lopsided. All right. And on Gerard, on Chris's, van, Chris's side, it looks like he's got a hand that has most of the things he wants here. It does have some Planeswalkers, uh, in addition to Scrylands, and like some pretty robust threats here. Charlie has kept a very land-heavy hand. He's got a Whip of Verabos, a Desecration Demon, and five lands, really leaning on his two copies of Temple of Silence to bridge the gap and find him some early action. Yeah, Whip and Demon is a game plan that's good in some matchups. I don't feel like it's particularly strong against monsters. Well, Desecration well, Demon, Demon is. Desecration Demon is among Charlie's better cards here, but it can't just be turn four Demon. He's got to at least present a Thought Seize or a removal spell somewhere along the line here. We found something he likes. Temple of Silence kept on top. And Chris makes a turn two Sylvan Karyatid. And you see that there's a Xenagos here in, in Chris's hand. Yeah, and then it's gonna, actually the card that Reinhardt kept on top, and this is what you talked about this earlier, is Packrat. Well, Packrat's not a, a bad way to bridge the gap. It gives him something to do on turn two and something to do on turn three. So right. if you're trying to fill out a little bit, which Charlie's hand needed, uh, you could do worse than Packrat. It's not ideal for this matchup, as we've mentioned before, but it's at least something to do, which is what Charlie was lacking. My worry with the Packrat is that it's a turn two Packrat on the draw against a Sylvan Carries. It just seems like it's not going to be fast enough. Looking at Chris's hand, you know, he already has cards like Gorklan Rampager, Xenagos, and Pelucranos available to him this turn. Yeah. But it, it, it's tough, you know, do you want to play a Xenagos into the jaws of this pack rat? Might be hard to, to fight. Do you just want to throw your Pelucranos out there when there's a really good chance he just gets it with the hero's downfall? Uh, so it is a bit of a squeeze. Yep. Van Meter goes for the Xenagos. It's going to shock for, for Stomping Ground. Xenagos will make a Seder token. And there's some danger. If he swings the Seder here, Reinhardt, thanks to Mutavault, can take out the Xenagos. Yeah, I would imagine that, that Chris is going to sit on his heels for one turn here. He's thinking about it, but it seems like worth pumping the brakes at least for a turn. Yeah. I, I'm inclined to agree as well. He, I think he wants the Xenagos to be more than just a 2-2 that time walks. I think, he, I think he, yeah, he actively wants to keep the Planeswalker on the battlefield. Well... Maybe taking away the turn, given the fact that, you know, you know Charlie has two copies of Bile Blight in his hand, maybe it's not worth trying to go too all out protecting the Xenagos. Uh, two copies in his deck, right? Yes. Okay. And we see, yeah, the Seder does swing, puts Reinhardt down to 18, and Reinhardt's draw for the turn was a Banishing Light. That's a pretty a pretty key draw, actually, for the matchup. Really important, especially with the, with the threats that Chris has in his hand. Yeah. Temple from Reinhardt will go ahead and 
Scry keeping a card on top, and it looks like, yeah, he's going to activate and take out the Xenagos. And I don't know, if it seems to me like what Chris traded, he traded a Planeswalker for two damage and a 2-2. Two -two. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's got bigger plans afoot. The Xenagos was just an enabler. It may just be some amount of a, a hedge against Bile Blight. And of course, this is the other. This is the other thing. Let's say Chris plays Zendigos, makes a token, and says go. And Charlie goes untap Lifebane Zombie, take your Palakronos. That's also pretty bad here. Right. So stripping away the turn at least opens up the opportunity for Palakronos to resolve without having to worry about Bioblight eventually just sweeping away all your Seder tokens. All right. And so what Vanu does with the turn is he goes ahead and plays a Temple of Abandon, uses the four man again to make the Palakronos you were talking about. Swings for two, has Reinhardt down to 16, and passes. So right now, Van Meter's still ahead on the board. Reinhardt, though, as we know, with both Banishing Light and Desecration Demon, has some answers available to him. And he's going to start with a Temple. So it's either Temple Banishing Light or Temple Pack Rat. Looks like Temple Banishing Light for the Pelucranos. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I, I can't imagine going ahead there and uh, not getting rid of that Palakronos when, when you got a spot to do so. Yeah, he can't actually risk the Pelucranos getting becoming a 7-7 seven, seven and being able to fight through the demon. Swing of pack up puts Vanmeter down to 15. So right now life totals are actually close. Reinhardt doing a good job of keeping the board clean, but it's gonna be harder now. Van Meter does hit that plays another land, and he's gonna go ahead and make Storm Breath Dragon for the turn. This time crashing over for six damage, dropping Reinhardt down to ten. This is the recipe, just man acceleration into high impact threats. All right, and we will see how many more answers Reinhardt has. We know he has a Desecration Demon. However, with one more land, Van Meter can actually monster that Storm Breath Dragon and swing through a Desecration Demon. Charlie's got a lot of tools in his hand. I mean, he has his Hero's Downfall. He's got Mutavolts to block on the ground with his Pack Rat. It's just not clear he has quite enough time and life to slog through all of Chris's tricks. Yeah, well, because of that threat of seven mana, I, I'm guessing Reinhardt has to start with a hero's downfall here for the set, for the Storm Breath Dragon. Right? It doesn't seem like he can afford to play Desecration Demon. No, I don't think he can play Demon this turn. The question to me was whether or not he wanted to try to trap Chris. You mean try to get him to monstrous the dragon on his own? Yeah. But if Chris plays a seventh land and just says, all right, attack you, then... Then Reinhardt really pays the price for having done that. Absolutely, he'll, yeah. Yeah, he'll get sudden impacted. And with uh, with five, four more cards in his hand, I'm not sure he can take that risk. He does play the hero's downfall. So Van Meter still has plenty of some gas left. What Reinhardt has going for him, and this is a pretty big thing he has going for him, is that if he can get the Desecration Demon down, he can next turn cast Whip of Erebos and start to race Chris. Yeah, and Chris is running out of raw resources here. He doesn't have a lot left over. He does have a Dombra in his hand. That may or may not be able to find him more fuel, but he's running out of the resources to be able to slog through a Desecration Demon. Yeah, he has a Dombra. He has a Gore Clan Rampager as well right now. So he can play both this turn. He's going to start with an attack. This is a swing with a Seder token. And this is a bit of a trap by Van Meter. It's a block with Pack Rat, a double activation of Mutavol. So that's going to price Van Meter into blood rushing here. So Sitter comes to 6-6, six, six, tramples over for three. Reinhardt goes to seven. And that, that there, I have some, it's like a mixed bag there. I like that he got, you know, he, he used, got through the pack rat, but at the same time, I'm not sure, oh, you know, he lost a Gorkin Rampager. Good post-combat play there for Van Meter. It's a lot of resources, but this, sequence is not ideal against uh, Desecration Demon, which is the card that Charlie has left over. Yeah, he used post-combat Domirad to have the Seder token fight away one of the Mutavolts. The Seder token number was a 6-6 six, six with three damage on it, so got to do that and live. But you're right, yeah, Desecration Demon's great against this. Banishing Light as a backup spell to me puts, puts Charlie ahead. Yeah, I, right now if I'm, if I'm it looks like Charlie's going to just take care of this Domri and try to block the Seder, try to clear out as much of the board as possible. I think in his spot, I probably would have just jammed the Desecration Demon, but I can respect this play too. Yeah. This play is weaker to really good top decks, but is could be safer as well. 
Swing for the Seder from Van Meter. It's going to trade with Mutavolt, and Van Meter did not draw another threat. He just passes back. And now we see Reinhardt going to try to turn the corner here with Desecration Demon. There it is. Yep, Dreadbore, the draw for Van Meter. He has Dreadbore and now Scavenging Ooze. So Scavenging Ooze actually will help a ton against the Whip of Erebos. Scavenging Ooze is a huge draw here. I mean, that's just a, it is uh, this cheap. This draw. It's cheap, it's basically lethal on its own. Yeah, and one good draw deserves another here. Reinhardt draws another copy of Desecration Demon. Well, it's still not, it's still not clear it's gonna totally get him out of the spot here. Because there's a, a Rampager, a Storm Breath Dragon, a Pack Rat, and a Desecration Demon in the graveyard. So that's minimum 6-6 six, six here. He can also, he can sack the Sylvan Karyatid, make the ooze into a 7-7 seven, seven by eating the Karyatid, and that's exactly lethal. Yeah, so if Van Meter sees that, then right, th that's what he has to do here, right? Yeah, yeah he, and if, if, I think he will. So yeah, ooze up to a 5-5. Five, five. And Chris is moving very quickly here. I think he's, he sees this. I mean, it's just exile the one last creature, sacrifice the Karyatid to the demon, and that's exactly 7. Yeah, he... Reinhardt needs one more. If Reinhardt had one more life point, things would be a lot different. He'd be able to cast Whip, start getting lifelink for his creature. But um, it looks like this should be lethal for Van Meter. If he, yeah, if he sees the, if he sacks the carry to, to tap the demon, he can eat two creatures. That puts Reinhardt down to zero. Elvish Mystic for Chris Van Meter. And there we go. Goes to combat, sacks the elf, taps the demon, eats two creatures, makes Uza 7-7, seven, seven, and game one goes to Chris Van Meter. And that was exactly the Jun Monster recipe right there, was getting out in front and just having enough haste creatures, enough tempo, enough spot removal to contain what Charlie was doing. It wasn't that Charlie didn't have a good draw. He had plenty of tools there to win that matchup. Yeah, I almost felt like if the demon was, there were some spots where Charlie maybe could have turned the corner. If, he, if the demon was down earlier, uh, I, there maybe he had a shot in there. I'm not sure about it, but a game that close and you know it could have gone either way. Absolutely. All right, so those of you joining us, we're back in the booth, Matthias Hunt and Patrick Sullivan. We are in the midst of our finals here in the Standard Open, so it is time to give away a full, ye full year's worth of Star City Games Premium. For those of you watching, remember, you're going to be watching the, the live broadcast, so if you're watching the rebroadcast, then we will have already given away the prize. But for those of you with us right now, um, we're going to do a final trivia question. Again, tweet your answer as SCG Live, hashtag SCG Premium. Don't worry about responding first, just respond accurately. And this contest is run at the sole discretion of StarCityGames.com. Twitch.tv is in no way affiliated with this giveaway on its stream. The question I have for you is next weekend, the uh, Open Series moves on. Osip Lebedovich and Cedric Phillips will be in the booth. Name the city, where Star City Games is going to be. Again, tweet your answer at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Premium, and one of you will be selected for a full year of Star City Games Premium content. All right. Excellent. So let's go ahead and do our match. We have right now Chris Van Meter one game away from taking down that elusive title. Or will it be Charlie Reinhardt coming down from one game back to win games two and three and take the open for himself? Uh, let's start on Reinhardt's side. He is down a game. He's going to be the one making adjustments. He's got access to a Pithy Needle, two Sin Collectors, three Dark Betrayals, a DSI, three Doom Blades, two Drown and Sorrow, three copies of Duress. 100% best cyborg card that he has in this matchup is Doomblade. It's just a great answer right. to these the large creatures that Chris is bringing to the table. I think he's going to want to bring in the Pithy Needle as well as an answer to, to Troublesome Planeswalkers. I'm not sure if he's going to want to go so far as to bring in Duress, although Chris does have some troubling spells both in his main deck and in his sideboard. But those are the cards we're looking at here, the Doomblades and the Pithy Needle, and then potentially the Duresses. Yeah, I think that'll be inter the interesting thing will be to decide whether or not he wants Duress. That'll probably, I imagine, be a function of how many cards he wants to board out. He does have some main deck cards like Sin Collector that are pretty weak in this matchup. I don't actually see so many weak cards that I would want to board in the Duresses right now. I, I think it may just be those first three, four you were talking about. Yeah, to me, the, the cards that stand out as being a little underpowered in the matchup are the Pack Rats, the Sin Collectors, uh, the Whip of Erebos, and the Blood Barons. To me, those are the flex slots of... These right. cards could afford to leave the deck. Yep, that sounds about right. So he could board up to eight cards there if he wanted to. Granted, I'm not positive that all the eight cards in his board are better than those, but at least some of them are. Yeah, so he's got, it, we know for sure, he, he definitely has the room for the three Doom Blades and the Pithy Needle. There's no question about that. Whether or not he wants to duress, it's less clear, like you mentioned. It's, it's not clear upgrade over some of these cards, but I think a lot of his creatures just aren't very well suited for the matchup, and I'd rather just become more of a Elspeth Desecration Demon deck with a lot of removal. Yeah. 
on Chris's side, three Miskar Ages, three Nylea's Disciples, a Doom Blade, two Golgari Charm, two Putrefy, a Vraska the Unseen, a Mizzy Mortars, and two Rakdos Return. He's going to want some more of his anti-control cards here. The Vraska, I think the two copies of Putrefy are going to be coming in. They're just excellent answers to a lot of Charlie's large creatures, especially the one copy of Obsidian Ghost Council, which Chris is not really that well equipped to fight otherwise. And I think the two copies of Rakdos Returns are haymakers in this matchup. He knows he's playing against Black White Midrange. He's not playing against Esper. There's no risk of counter spells here. And a large Rakdos Return could just be game over. A card I'm interested to see whether or not Van Meter will board in in this matchup is Golgari Charm. We've seen it has been very good against Esper and like Blue White Control X because of its ability to take care of enchantments as well as regenerate through a Supreme Verdict. He can use a Golgari Charm in this matchup to save one of his creatures as well as to sometimes remove a Banishing Light. Reinhardt doesn't have a full set of them. So it it's weaker at regenerating, it's weaker at blowing up enchantments, but I'll be interested to see whether or not it's still strong enough to board in in the matchup. It feels right on the edge to me. It also has the ability to, you know, Charlie does have some one toughness creatures in his deck, so even though he's lighter on enchantments, he is heavier on, you know, life bane zombies and occasionally pack rat as well. To me, it feels like overall not worth bringing in in the matchup, but it's not unreasonable. He can regenerate against various Doom Blades and Heroes downfall type effects. There are some enchantments in Charlie's deck, and the minus one, minus one mode has some utility as well. Yeah, it, it does a lot of different things. I'm not sure it does anything well in this matchup, but it might just be it has enough utility that it's still okay. Right, it's not going to be for any one purpose, but because the total sum of its parts is enough to warrant inclusion. Yeah, so Reinhardt will get to be on the play this game as Chris took down game one. You can hear in the background, it's you know a little after 9 o'clock here, East Coast time. Players already starting to shuffle in for the Legacy Open. I have the feeling this is going to be a big one today. Yeah, certainly this part of the country known, known for having pretty good Legacy showings. There'll be a Legacy Grand Prix here later in the year as yes. well. Looking forward to that one. All right, and we are underway for the finals here. Game two, Charlie Reinhardt on the play. He's going to go ahead and Thoughtseize. We'll see what he's working against. Van Meter has kept a hand of four lands. Two of them temples, a Elvish Mystic, a Dreadbore, and a Stormbreath Dragon. Pretty slow hand here, and there's definitely some points of attack here. Charlie can slow him down by taking the Mystic, take his one large start with the Stormbreath Dragon, or open up a path for something like Desecration Demon by taking the Dreadbore. So a lot of options here for Charlie. Absolutely, and he goes with taking the Elvish Mystic. I I like that play, especially if he has a kill spell already for to cover the Stormbreath Dragon. Mystic certainly one of the stronger cards out of Jund. And it does appear that, that Charlie has at least Doomblade in his hand. Yeah, he has Doomblade. A lo Looks like he has Doomblade in lands. Yeah. So he's definitely at the mercy of the top of Chris's deck right now. And right, Chris trying to scry himself back into something. And a, right now, a pack rat was a draw for Reinhardt. That will probably force Chris to fire off the Dread Boar. It's going gonna, it's gonna to necessitate some sort of removal spell here. Yeah, he did draw Abrupt Decay for the turn, so he has some choices as to what removal spell he chooses to use here. He's going to take the less versatile Abrupt Decay. At least in this matchup, I think, what's less versatile. Yeah, Chris needs to keep his answers to Desecration Demon available to him. Scry for Reinhardt and a replacement pack rat is his draw. So he's at least bleeding out the removal. Uh, you know, it's not great to run these two pack rats and the two removal spells, but... It is clearing the way for a large threat of Charlie's to go uncontested. Yeah. Still deciding on a scry. His cards are just lands, Doomblade, and Pack Rat. He'll keep the card on top, replace the Pack Rat that Van Meter took out, and pass back. We see a second Storm Breath, the draw for Chris Van Meter. And as he works his way toward these pair of Storm Breaths, now he has more finishers than Reinhardt currently has removal. Still, he's got to make his land drops here and slog through presumably quite a few removal spells. Uh, Dreadbore takes out Pack Rat. And we are back onto Reinhardt. Looks like his draw for the turn, a Bio Blight and a land into play tapped. Or an, ulti an ultimate price, actually. So now, between the other place and the Doom Blade, Reinhardt once again has Van Meter's creatures covered. And Chris's hand right now is four copies of Stormbreath Dragon. <laughs> and that was the perfect draw for Charlie here. I yeah. mean, that, that is the, the perfect card to exploit this. So Desecration Demon, the draw for Charlie. Chris doesn't draw the, <laughs> doesn't draw the fifth land. He draws an Elvish Mystic. 
So next turn, we'll start seeing a lot of Storm Breath from Van Meter. And at Charlie's hand now, three removal spells, two copies of Doomblade and an ultimate price. This is uh, a hand very well equipped to just race running Storm Breath Dragons. Well, if you look at this six, six, and six, that's three swings from Desecration Demon. Uh, he could actually just clear the air every turn yep. and deal enough damage. So there's the first six that puts Van Meter down to 12. Um, Van Meter doesn't have the fifth land either. He's just going to play Domri, and this game should be going to Reinhardt. I think we're moving on to the third one here. Yeah, Pelucranos revealed off Domri. That's drawn. Yeah, Van Meter, the way Van Meter can get this is he needs to draw basically Dreadbore. Has to be Dreadbore, and he's got, or Putrefy. Right. So he's got a couple outs here, but he's, he's drawing pretty slim. Yeah, he needs a removal spell. Desecration Demon hits him down to six. And can he draw a removal for Demon? It is Xenagos the Reveler. That is not going to work. He doesn't have a way to draw another card, and that should be the game. Yep. I mean, he's going to keep playing here. I don't think he knows that, that Charlie has these removal spells in hand, but yeah. he is uh, in a lot of trouble. Plus one by Domri. Well, yeah, well, he has... Actually, hold on. He Well, yeah, I would say he would be yeah. fine without the removal. Yeah, he's going to make the Seder. Can he use the Seder to tap the Demon? No. Reiner's going to go ahead and do play the Seder. <laughs> yeah, he shows... <laughs> Collected the whole set of storm breaths. <laughs> yeah, the entire playset. And now we are on to game three. That's the the first time Chris has been touched in the elimination rounds. Yeah, that is. He has. He had won previously, the first five games in the top eight, and none of them particularly close. Yeah. So that was an informative game because Jump Monsters has so many different angles of attack that it's really hard to beat them just on just on removal spells. Let's say because. Right. There's enough haste in the deck. There's enough Planeswalkers. The one thing they are really susceptible to out of this Black Wave mid-range deck is the fast Desecration Demon backed up by some removal spells. Because the shorter the game is, the more it takes some of the legs out of the Planeswalkers and Chris's ability to deploy running four and five mana threats. Yeah, that's a near ideal hand for Reinhardt. Even if you forget about the fact that he had two pack rats, a hand of two Desecration Demons followed up by Doomblade Ultimate Price, Ultimate Price, that's a hand that's very difficult for Jun Monsters to beat. Yeah. It seems like the Black White Mid Range deck has these tools where, you know, play this really draggy game involving pack rats or trying to get to Elspeth. Some of the games can break that way. You can win sometimes, but. It, it's much harder to win that way because you're playing into all of Jun Monster's angles of attack. But just Doomblade's ultimate prices and uh, maybe a discard spell to strip their one removal spell for your Desecration Demon and then the Demon, that's a great recipe. Right. And I, I kind of saw that there. You know, Packrat was not particularly impressive that game once again. Granted, they did get removed, but it, I wasn't always positive that Reinhardt was, was going to have the time to Packrat his opponent. However, Desecration Demon... You know, he played that, Chris was at 18, and we're like, okay, well, the last a three-turn clock. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and it made very short work of the game. Yeah. So game three about to get started here. This is a big one for Chris for a number of reasons. I mean, gives him a huge lead in the season two point invites. And of course, on a personal level, he's been waiting for this win for a very long time. Absolutely. Although I think covering him with no beard on is going to be a trip. You know, the first time he's on camera, assuming that he wins this tournament. Yeah, it certainly will, it will change his look. Yeah. We've gotten so accustomed to this, you know. <laughs> See if he can get there. Yeah, it's been great having Chris it's... back on the scene. He was he was kind of out of the loop for a couple of years. He was uh, one of the Star City Games' most prominent grinders a few years ago during that Pro Player Club era. Took a couple of years off, uh, but he's back and... Uh, great to have him around, of course. Uh, uh, a great player and just an awesome opponent, good human being. It's great to have him part of the scene again. And for Charlie so far, a great run, of course, and he's been very solid on camera. Definitely understands the operations of his deck pretty well. Yeah, we... Yeah, absolutely on camera. He was able to defeat... Two's, by the way, Charlie Reinhardt was the one match we didn't get to yesterday. He did play the other Monsters deck in our top eight. That was against Yvonne Torres. Torres was running red-green Monsters. Um, Reinhardt got that match in top eight. It did take him three games to get it. A little throwback. Not Jund well, Monsters, just green-red. Just green-red Monsters. No Jund. 
It does still show up from time to time. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of seeing something like that. Just yeah. don't need this third color. And it, it could just be a concession to burn. I mean, that's one of the best ways to improve your burn matchup is stop cut playing the a third color. Cut the extraneous color from your deck. Yeah. And I'm not sure how much the black cards add to this matchup for Chris, to be completely honest. The black cards are great in some matchups, but I would say from, from a black-white mid-range side of the table, Jund Monsters and Red-Green Monsters probably look like pretty much the same deck. Well, the black gives you some answers to Desecration Demon. That's the big thing. You get yeah. access to uh, Dread Boar and Putrefy. And yeah. those are big upgrades. Game three, Van Meter is on the play. We do see a hand here with, which he's going to keep. Looks like he's got some lands in it. I believe a Domri followed and a Storm Breath Dragon. And Reinhardt's hand looks like it's good. I don't know how many lands Van Meter has. He has Vraska, Domri, Storm Breath. It looks like he's just on stomp. It looks yeah. like he's on just stomping ground Muta Vault. I think so as well. And he's going to have to get some game going to see Reinhardt there with an Elspeth Sun's champion to build up to. And there we go, another land drawn for Chris. So he, and this one's a temple. This will help him set up. Turn two, he has stomping ground, and he had Sylvan carry to it in the first place. All right, that's the opening right there. And you wonder why Chris didn't play the stomping ground on the first turn. Why did he play Mutavault? It's in case Charlie thought seized him, he wanted the ability to hit him with Mutavault. Mutavault to play for Reinhardt. See, he has Doomblade shuffled to the front of his hand. That's his permission spell. So Chris starts out with the Scry here. It looks like his play is going to be Domri. So if it's a creature, he'll almost certainly keep it on top. I think he's keeping any creature and any black source of mana on top. Yeah, Domri Rod, the play, it's going to plus. And nope, it's not a creature. doesn't need to look. I would, I would be willing to guess that that's some sort of black source of mana. Yeah. And so Reinhardt had the Doomblade up, but you can't Doomblade a Domri. So Chris plays very well around what Charlie could have here. We do see Charlie does have a Banishing Light for the Domri, so he's going to have to decide between Banishing Light and Thoughtseize. Yep. He has also the option of... Uh, you know, yeah, he could thought season and then attack the Domri for two, but attacking the Domri for two is not that great in the face of the Sylvan Karyatid. Yeah, he's going to banish away the Domri. We'll see where Van Meter wants to go from here. He didn't, his top card, it looks like, was another land. It actually wasn't a black mana source, but he still has the Karyatid for black mana, so he's fine right now. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's some uh, urgency on Van Meter's side, however. If you look at Reinhardt's hand, he has, his next turn could be as good as Life Bane Zombie plus Duress. Or plus thought sees. Yeah. And he can just go to work on Van Meter's hand. The bigger problem is that it's 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 trivial for Charlie to answer a lot of the threats that, that Chris has access to. The planeswalkers are a different dimension of attack, but these Polychronoses and Stormbreath Dragons, it's pretty easy for Charlie to bat those aside with his spot removals. Yeah. So Chris for that turn goes ahead and makes Xenagos the Reveler. He makes a Seder, it crashes in for two, and Charlie's at an eighteen. I'm not sure that Charlie has an answer immediately to the Xenagos. He has an answer to most everything else Chris is doing. So we'll see where he goes there. He does have an Elspeth to build up to as well. Yeah. He's got, again, this is, Charlie has all the tools. It's just, does he have enough time? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and start on Lifebane Zombie. So he sees Pelucranos, Stormbreath Dragon, Vraska. So Lifebane will get the Pelucranos. There's two more cards that Charlie needs to deal with. And he kind of gets to pick his poison here, as whichever one he doesn't take with a thought sees, Chris will resolve next turn. And my guess is, it's really hard to say, neither of them work that well. So he's going to go ahead and thought sees away, let's see, the Vraska. Yeah, and he's willing to fight through. I mean, he's going to be looking at basically two Seder tokens, a Storm Breath Dragon. The Life Bane will be able to finish off Xenagos next turn, and then it's the issue of can you f clean up what's left over? Yeah, and right now he has the tools to do it. He has a Doom Blade in his hand for the Storm Breath, and he has an Elspeth for the following turn to take care of the Seder tokens. So, yeah, Life Bane answers Xenagos, Doom Blade takes care of Storm Breath, Elspeth takes care of the Seder tokens. It looks like Charlie has a path to victory. I don't think Van Meter will deal 16 before that happens. Well, I don't know. He's taking a huge shot this turn. I mean, Charlie's taking eight. 
from the Stormbreath Dragon and the two Satyrs. There's still a Muta Vault in play. Yeah, so, so it, that, that puts him to two if you add that up. So yeah. it, it's not lethal, but it's it's close. Right. Exactly. Family are deciding he has a looks like a Domri rod is what he's deciding on the scry. Go ahead and keep it. And another Seder token enters the battlefield for him. He's going to commit all out. That's Sermoth Dragon, eight damage. Reinhardt will drop to eight. The die has been cast. Now we'll see if Charlie is able to clean all this up in time. Yeah. And a second Doomblade to draw for Reinhardt. Huge draw. Yes, he, he already was going to cast one Doomblade this turn. The question is whether or not he'd be able to cast anything else. Now he's not out of the woods yet. Charlie has no sixth land at the moment. So he's going to take care of Xenagos, step one. Now he's going to stay alive. And yeah, he's going to go ahead and Doomblade the dragon before Van Meter gets a chance to monster it. So again, there's a path here. Yep. Just absolutely. So family is going to get to untap. No cards in hand. The top card, I believe, is a Domri. Yeah, that he kept, scried there. Kept Domri on top. He also, and importantly, also has a Mutavolt. But Charlie, this turn has access to something like he can block with his Mutavolt. He can Doomblade something else, and still have enough mana, mana left over to cast Desecration Demon next turn. He's not married to trying to get Elspeth into play. He can he can ignore that line if he's feeling so inclined. Yeah. If he goes for that line and he gets the mana for Elspeth, then the play is, is lights out level good. But I agree that maybe that's not the line he wants. He's gonna yeah, and it looks like he's gonna go for the desecration demon line. Stranding Elspeth. He out activates Mutavolt. Mutavolt's gonna go ahead and block a Seder token. Before damage, he's going to go ahead and I may imagine Doomblade the Mutavolt. Yeah, cutting him, cutting Chris off of mana seems reasonable right now. Although, it, you know, the Mutavolt's two mana and Chris does have five mana haste creatures in his deck. So it's, it's pretty close between the Seder and the Mutavolt being better. Yep. And before damage, yeah, Doomblade is thrown down. At the other Seder token, Mutavolt gets to live here. Yeah, I, I think that's totally fine. I, yep. I, again, it's close, but uh, with Chris having a lot of expensive spells in this deck, there's going to be some turns where he can't cast stuff and activate the Mutavolt. So he's tying up Mutavolt's yeah. mana. And then Domery, the post-combat play by Chris. Can he draw a card off it? He pluses the Domery, and he does not draw. And this is a pretty good window for Reinhardt. Yeah, it's a good spot to land Desecration Demon and start taxing this Domery a little bit. Right, let's see his draw for the turn. He would have hit the untapped land. He, of course, can't play that way, but we'll see. It looks like Lifebane will, can, Life can threaten the, the Domri. Desecration Demon can be cast this turn. Charlie's remaining hand is land five, Desecration Demon, Elspeth. I think he's got to start working over this Domri. There's too many threatening draws that Chris has access to. Absolutely. And it's not like you can just start racing here with the Desecration Demon, because Chris ha has at least the ability to tap it twice in play. Yeah, Desecration Demon made for Reinhardt. I mean, the Demon is just trying to buy time to Elspeth. Yes. We'll see what Chris draws. Remember, that that one we know wasn't a creature. He didn't flip it off the Darmory. He pluses again, and he misses a second time. Now, th keep in mind, there's a lot of removal spells in Chris's deck post-board. These aren't necessarily lands. They could be Dread Boars and Putrefies and such, but... Uh, Chris really needs to find action, especially with that Elspeth looming. Yeah, if those are lands, this game is, Chris is in a quickly lot of trouble. swinging toward Charlie. A lot of trouble. And you can see on his face, he knows he's in a tough spot. Yeah, he does have the opportunity here to hit four two points of damage if he wants to. He can use the Sylvan Carrier to, to tap down the Demon and get him for two, but that doesn't leave him with a lot going on here. Let's see what he, what he can do here. He he does have the option at some point to sack the Carrier to, to tap Demon. Yes. The question is when he wants to do that. And uh, remember, he also has the Muta Vault too, so he's at no immediate risk of losing to the Desecration Demon. But there is the problem of 
What's the plan going forward here? And if Charlie is able to find, let's say, a Doom Blade here, that might wrap it up. And a sixth land is really good for Charlie as well because he has Elspeth. Right, there's, so it was a, a Blood Crypt for the turn. There's some advantages. If he tapped the Demon, he could put Charlie at four, which means if he top decks a Storm Breath Dragon, things would be good for him. And Charlie does draw land six for the turn. It's a Godless Shrine, so it'll make him It'll be scary. It'll make him go down to four. But if he wants to, he can make that Elspeth. I'm not sure if he's willing to do it. I mean, if he just goes, if he goes land, untapped Elspeth, he loses the Storm Breath Dragon. Now, if he takes care of Domri, he knows there's no threat of that this turn. Right, yeah, because we know the top card of the deck isn't a creature. Or if it is, Chris is just a master. Right. But it still leads, it still might mean that next turn he can die to Storm Breath Dragon. Right, so question, the question he'd be asking is does he have to make that play? I think I would still want to do it, but it certainly is closer. And he's actually just going to send nine damage upstairs. Uh, no, he's sorry, three, three to, sorry, he's going to send three to Domri and six to Chris. And he's shocking to four. Okay. He's gonna, going all in here, casting Elspeth, plussing her three one ones. Chris down to 13. Now, Chris is not dead on board next turn. Chris at 13. Charlie can maximum hit for 12. And Chris still has the option of taking care of the Desecration Demon if he's feeling so inclined by tapping it. So Storm Breath Dragon is still live given the board. Charlie, of course, has his draws to Doom Blade and Ultimate Price. But yeah, if and Rakdos Return is also lethal. Right. I would say Rakdos Return is also going to win. Temple. It's a Dreadboard. Dreadboard is good, but not good enough. I have to think he's going to ship it. Yeah, the, I think Chris has got to play to his outs here. He's got, you know, again, Storm Breath Dragon. Charlie's empty handed. Storm Breath Dragon's good unless Charlie draws an answer, and Rakdos Return is good. This Dreadboard is not much of a reprieve right now. Chris knows it too. It's going straight to the bottom. Yeah, it took a, there was a second there, you know, looking at Dreadboard, thinking this card would have been real good a couple turns ago. However, with both Demon and and Elspeth, and three tokens already made. Dreadboard doesn't even buy you a turn. Yeah. And Chris, I believe, is down to one top deck. He's got some outs. He's, he's up against the wall for sure. Yeah. Charlie has some ways to close out those outs as well. Um, if Charlie draws a doom, a spot removal spell, it closes a lot of outs. If Charlie draws Whip of Erebos, it probably closes all the outs. Yeah. If Whip is even in his deck, I mean, that would be near the top right. of the list of cards to cut in my mind in this matchup, uh, just because uh, Chris has removal spells and scavenging ooze, and it's not really, it's more about board presence than a damage race. Right. And if I'm Chris, I, I want, we'll see whether he taps. I don't think it particularly matters. Doesn't really change any of the outs. Rado's return, he's still got plenty. And Stormbreath Dragon, he's still got the mana for. All right, Demon is tapped. Reinhardt is going to swing. 4-6. Mutabot will eat one of the soldiers. Chris takes five, goes to eight. And with this plus, Chris with a creature can buy himself one more top deck right now. He'd have to be able to block a soldier and tap the demon, and then he only takes seven next turn. Yeah, Chris is facing exactly the... He's rubbing his hands. I mean, he knows he's got... All right, and that closes that right. out. Now it's just this top deck. Can Chris do Storm it? Storm Breath, Rakdos Return. Here we go. This is for the title. <laughs> and he knows it. All right. Can Chris Van Meter take this home with the top deck? Hasn't looked at it yet. Now he knows. Did he get there? He didn't slam it. I don't think it's there. This would be a really good slow roll. But I suspect it is not. What did he hit? I don't think it's there. I mean, the Blood Crip and the Stomping Ground, that's a red and a black set aside. It's okay, it's Scavenging Ooze. There... No, I don't think he can do anything with this. Because Blood Baron's going to gain too much life. Yeah, this is, I, I think this, this is the one draw I believe that gives Chris another turn, but leaves him drawing to nothing, I believe. Right.
because any pump that allows him to uh, survive the Blood Baron would allow Charlie to simply minus Elspeth if he was feeling so inclined or do other things. And just gating for a life for Charlie does all the work. Exactly. Drop the tune there, Charlie with a commanding board. Should be able to get there. I'll make sure he closes it out. He goes he goes to combat. Chris is going to have to activate Mutavault and sacrifice it to the Desecration Demon. Demon is tapped, becomes an 8-8. As long as Charlie attacks Blood Baron here, he's fine. Yeah, it doesn't matter if he loses the Blood Baron. It's just an issue of gaining life. And he's going to swing the entire team. It's the correct move. And this is one that should close it out. The only way Chris can survive is he has to block Blood Baron. And he doesn't even have a third green man in play. So yeah, he can't it's even be a trade. He can't even pump his ooze to a 5-5. Five five. So there's going to be a trade there. Chris is going to, yeah, Chris can go to 10. Yeah, and he, ha he has to block Blood Baron. He can't block a soldier token. It appears that this is going to be the first loss Chris takes of the entire tournament here in the finals. And he gets so close. His first wins the first five games of the top eight. Gets within one game. Hasn't lost a match all day. Then games two and three. So close. Yeah. This one was full of drama, too. I mean, this, was, this game was really back and forth. Chris on his last turn there had some draws, but scavenging news was not one of them. He's going to go ahead and eat two cards. That's going to be two creatures. Storm Breath. St among them, Storm Breath Dragon. Ooze becomes a 4 4. It's going to trade with Blood Baron. Reinhardt will go up to eight. Van Meter is going to go ahead and take eight. He drops to two. With only six mana, no permanents in play. I don't think Ryan Van Meter has a play that can deal eight. Not from here. I mean, Rando's return is his only X spell, and he's well short of that. Yeah, three more tokens from Elspeth. And it's a four, so that'll be it. Charlie Reinhardt defeats Chris Van Meter two games to one. He is your Star City Games Somerset, New Jersey standard champion. A great match there. Uh, congratulations to Charlie. Chris, just a little short there. Um, I, what else can you say? A, a really dramatic finals. You can tell Chris is a little a little deflated right now, being that close to, to winning one of these to this open. But um, uh, of course, just another great tournament run for Chris. For